This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids. We've got a shear flow problem that's really a third part of a problem that I've got two more videos on. This one is on shear flow, and shear flow is something that we use for what's called composite shapes, where we build up a section or a cross section of a beam by putting parts and pieces together and fastening them or connecting them together. Uh, one of the main factors is the fastener spacing or it's the shear flow, the transverse shear flow that exists in a beam when it's under bending and it makes everything work together. So that's the idea here is to build up a section usually out of wood or steel or something with uh, screws or nails or welds or glue we can use glue to connect sections so uh, the basic formulas that we're going to use are given to us on the equation sheet in this form here um, and one of them I like and one of them I don't like we get the formula little q is VQ over I. So the units of that are force. Big Q is units cubed, so it's let's say inches cubed. Moment of inertia on the bottom is inches to the fourth. So what I get is force per inch or force per distance. Q is a force, a shear flow, shear force, a shear flow per length, longitudinal length of the beam. And so, second formula is given to us on the equation sheet in this form. S is equal to V nail over little Q. I prefer to rearrange that and say that little Q is, which is shear flow, is V nail divided by S, which is also equal to that first formula, VQ over I. So we can set those two formulas equal to each other, and let's look at what those values mean. For V nail, what that really means, that's unfortunately named, it's really the amount of shear force you have per fastener. And so it is really the number of fasteners involved connecting the part that you're connecting times the shear force provided by each fastener. So we'll talk about that in this example. S on the bottom is the spacing of the fasteners. And that's equal to this other formula that's pretty familiar from the shear stress formula, except we're missing T. We have V is the shear force. I on the bottom is the moment of inertia. And Q is a little bit different. Capital big Q is a little bit different. It's still Y bar prime A prime. But in this case, A prime is the area of the composite part being fastened or connected to the other parts. Y bar prime is still the same number, the distance from the centroid of A prime to the neutral axis of the beam. So that being given, here's the specific problem that we're going to work on. In this earlier videos, I did in green, what's shown here in green, I developed these numbers. I developed Y bar is for the overall shape, the distance from the top to the neutral axis 2.038 inches and the moment of inertia about that neutral axis is 30.31 inches to the fourth. See that other video to see how I got those numbers. Now I did another video that just showed the shear stress at various points one there and one there and then one on the neutral axis Look at that video to see shear stress in that beam. 
This is a shear flow problem, so we want to build that beam up out of three rectangles. There's two ways of doing it that are obvious. One is case one, and I take a five inch board, put it on the top horizontally, and put two four inch boards downward for vertical legs. Each board is one inch thick. So, what I'm trying to find here is the screw spacing to the nearest quarter inch. The screws that I'm attaching with, as I show in blue here, are half inch diameter screws. And the screws have an average allowable shear stress of 20 KSI. So each screw can take an allowable shear stress of 20 KSI. Average allowable shear stress means I use the formula tau average is equal to V over A. Therefore, V is what I want. I want the shear force per fastener per, per screw. So. I look at that and I say V nail, which is V per screw really, is tau times A. Well, tau is equal to 20 KSI. The area of a screw, each screw, is pi over 4 times the diameter to squared. The diameter of these things is 0.5. I square it and I get that each screw is worth 3.927 kips. My units here are inches squared so I got inches squared divided by inches squared that they cancel out and I just get kips. So each screw can provide 3.927 kips of shear flow transfer. Now I want to rearrange this equation up here. I have this equation Q is equal to V nail over S is also equal to VQ over I. I want to rearrange that because what I want to know is the screw spacing to the nearest quarter inch. So I rearrange that equation and it now becomes S is equal to V nail times I divided by VQ. Okay, V nail is the number of fasteners times the shear force per fastener. So that's going to be 2 because each board is fastened, the board on the top is fastened by two screws per spacing. Here I have a little view of this from the top. If I look down on this beam, I'm going to see the longitudinal length of it and every spacing S I've got two screws so the number of fasteners is two and the force per screw is 3.927 that's kips I, I've already calculated it's for the composite section in an earlier video it's 30.31 inches to the fourth V, I forgot to note, is 10 kips. That's the shear force on the section. Q is that slightly different, it's still Y bar prime, A prime, but in this case I say A, back up here, is the area of the composite part being fastened. 
So that's the area of the board on the top. So let's look at that up close. The area of the board on top is this area, 5 by 1. It's the area of the top board. It's being fastened to those two vertical boards. So A prime is just the area of that board, 5 times 1. Y bar prime is the distance from the centroid of that area to the neutral axis. So if I put a little cross there at the centroid of the, that board on the top, Y bar prime for this calculation is that number. And that's equal to the distance from the neutral axis to the, to the top is this 2.038 inches. So Y bar prime is 2.038 inches minus that distance from the top of the board to the centroid of the board, which is half an inch, minus 0.5 inches. So Y bar prime is equal to 1.538 inches. Therefore, I can complete this calculation Y bar prime is 1.538, which we just looked at. The area of the board is 5 square inches. So that is Q, and it's in inches cubed. So I do the math, and I come up with 3.09. Let's check our inches. I have kips per square inch on, I mean kips on the top, times inches to the fourth. So I have kip inches to the fourth. On the bottom, I have kips per square inch. I mean kips times inches cubed. I have kip inches cubed on the bottom. Kips cancel. Inches cubed cancels all but one of the inches on the top. And so I'm left with inches. Okay, so the absolute spacing I need is 3.09 inches, but I was asked for the nearest quarter inch. So I need to round it up, and this is for practicality. We don't want the guy having to build this thing, having to measure 3.09. And we want to make it a semi-round number, 3 inches or 3 and a quarter inches. So i got to think about this. If I space these things, these screws, at less than 3.09 inches, Will I be providing enough shear flow to transfer that transverse shear stress? Okay, so if I space them closer, yes, I'm, I'm going to really get, that's closer than what I need, and therefore that will be adequate. If I go to three and a quarter inches round up, I will be not spacing them close enough, so... Do I go to three inches or three and a quarter inches? Clearly, if I reason it out, I want to go to three inches, the smaller spacing. Okay, so now I've got another way to build this thing is to build it with two five inch by one inch boards on the sides, case two, and a three by one inch board horizontally connected with screws on the sides instead of from the top. So if I look at this thing from the side now, that's what I'm going to see. This is the longitudinal length of the beam. My spacing there is from the side, but it's still going to look like the same thing. So everything is the same except for Q. Force per screw is still 3.927 kips, so my spacing here is, I still got two of them. For every space, I've got two screws attaching that horizontal board to the verticals. So it's 2 times 3.927. The moment of inertia is still 3, 30.31. The shear force is still 10 kips. Now, let's look at what Q is. Q is just a little bit different. 
So, looking at the board, Q is a pri y bar prime a prime. A prime is the area of the board or the piece that I'm connecting. So it's the area of this little three by one board. So A prime now is three times one or three square inches. Y bar prime is the same number because the board's the same thickness. Here's the neutral axis. Here is Y bar prime. Y bar prime is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of that piece. It's still a half inch down from the top. So Y bar prime still is that 1.538 inches, 2.038 minus 0 0.5. Still 1.538 inches down. So now back to this calculation, Y bar prime is still 1.538. But A prime is now 3 square inches. So the units are still the same. I'm going to come up with inches. And I do the math and I get 5.15 inches. Once again, I have that same question. Do I go to 5 or do I go to 5 and a quarter? Well, the, the smaller spacing is going to be required. If I And I can check it. Plug in 5.25 and see what the uh, shear force solve for V. You'll see it'll be for a smaller V. Therefore, I go with the five square inches, I mean five inches spacing.